This is the ZMAR Podcast. Elite Benefits of America helps small and mid-sized companies with their health insurance programs. And now, your host, Butch ZMAR. Welcome back to the ZMAR Podcast. Today, I have Justin Schimmick with me. Justin, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Can you give our audience just a little bit of background on who you are? Obviously, you own an insurance agency, but tell your story, and then that way my audience could actually get to know you a little more. Sure, yeah. I uh, I do. I own an independent insurance agency. Career-wise, I've done a lot of different stuff. Uh, in 2000, 2008, I became a police officer. So for eight years, I was a, I was a police officer on the road in a small town in Wisconsin here. Uh, decided in, in 2016 that I wanted to go and venture out and do my own thing, so I Became a uh, farmer's insurance agent, a scratch agent in uh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, did that, ran it for about five years, built a pretty good business. But me and farmers, we just didn't, we didn't see eye to eye. And I got an offer to do some marketing for uh, a restoration company. And it was a great offer. So I took it, sold that book back. Uh, I did that job for two years and realized in that process that uh, I don't like working for people. Uh, I'm not, I'm not good at it. Uh, so uh, left there and started the Schmick Agency, uh, January first of this year. So that's that's uh, that catches me up on the on the professional side, and I also tell jokes on the internet. You're a comedian uh, for sure, and uh, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people. In fact, uh, when I was looking before our our, our podcast recording, you have like 130 thousand followers or something crazy for a small time insurance agent. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you know, it doesn't really translate well into the insurance world, but <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We're having a good time with it. Let me ask you, how did you start doing the, What made you start doing some of these videos you were doing that kind of went viral in a lot of ways, at least in, at least from my perspective? I know there's probably a lot of work behind the scenes and the ROI for a long time probably wasn't there. But what got you to that point to ha- and then started having fun with it? Yeah, well, when I when I was working at the restoration company, there was a, the late the girl that worked at the front desk was uh, she's a tough she's a tough cookie. She's a tough nut to crack. And when I first started and yeah, she she was very standoffish. And uh, so I, one of my buddies had got me a dad joke book for some reason as a like, congratulations on the new gig. So I had that and I just started, I would read it from my office. I would say, Hey, Heather. And I would read this, these jokes off to her and they're so dumb. And it just, it, it broke that shell for her. So then it just kind of continued like that. And one day, honestly, it was, it was just, I was just like, well, I just try recording these and putting them on TikTok and see what happens. <laughs> and uh, I started doing them and it was, yeah, it was a long road to you know just a couple views couple hundred views or whatever and then i just had a couple that that really hit and they took off got a few million views there and built the following up uh on there and during that time i was also posting them on facebook and i i really didn't even think twice about facebook reels nothing about it uh and then facebook sent me an email some somewhere like three or four months into it and said hey you got enough followers do you want to be in the creator fund and i was like what how do I have it? How do I have enough followers? I don't, what do you mean followers? So I look and I've got 35,000 followers. I was like, holy crap, like when did this happen? And so I just started focusing a little bit more on the Facebook side of things and learned how, you know, that grows because it grow, grew a lot faster than the TikTok stuff. And uh, yeah, after, I mean, it just, it's, it's kept blowing up. And I switched when I, le- I left that job to start my own. And uh, my friend Steph uh, works literally like two blocks from my house. So, uh, I wasn't working with Heather anymore, so I needed a new victim. So yeah. I just called Steph and I said, "Hey, can I come and uh, tell you dad jokes and and see if if people like us? We'll give it a shot." And after that, I think I was at like fifty thousand. After that, it, it just once I added Steph into the mix, it just we went way we went to the moon. Yes, I was gonna say Steph's a good character for it too. She uh, she gives you good feedback whether the good jokes are good or not. And um, obviously, there's a lot of people that follow her too because she's a good part of that that whole video. Now, at a certain point, do you ever run out of these dad jokes or just jokes in general? No, they just keep coming. Like it's, <laughs> There's so many out there. And what's really cool now is people will send me messages and send me different jokes. And so now I like oh. to like, if somebody sends me a joke and I'm using it, I like to tag them in it. So sure. they can, you know, they can get a little credit for sending it my way. The way I like it, I mean, I don't write these myself. Some of them I do every once in a while. Yeah, sure. But I just, the way it is, is I just like telling these to Steph. Because yep. she hasn't heard it, so yep. it's just I don't know. I just like to get a reaction on these jokes. Yeah, there's there's an infinite number of dad jokes out there. 
Uh, it sounds like it because I, I'm like, he, he's got one every single day. How does this, these got to run out? I, I'm curious though, the one you did recently with the rain, did, uh, um, did you make up that one or did, uh, was that another dad joke? I had that one on hold in case we got a day where it was raining. It was sitting uh, in, the, in the back burner. I was like, he had to make this one up because I mean, it was good, but I was <laughs> like, how coincidental it was raining that day. And then you come up with a raining joke. Obviously, you've been an insurance agency, um, you know, off and on, and then now you're back full time again. But I'm going to go back further a little bit because you had brought up about uh, one point in time, you were a police officer, you went to school for law enforcement. And so how was the time um, as a police officer and how is it different today? I know you're not engaged into it, but like what uh, and like what if you were to go back and give your old self some advice um, on that? And how was your experience with being a police officer in Wisconsin? I th- I think uh, if I had to go back and tell my old self any advice, I just don't take everything so seriously. <laughs> but that would that would I would give that advice to myself years ago, no matter what, whether sure. whatever job I was in. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I, I I really liked it. It was a good job for the age that I was. But once I started having kids and family, it the the law enforcement job, and I give I give all law enforcement the utmost respect and credit because <laughs> the the job hardens you and it makes everything gray and you have to you can't have any emotion because as soon as emotion comes into it you make bad decisions uh because you can't you can't you just can't make those heat of the moment decisions based on emotion of the situation so you have to turn your emotions off and that sometimes can bleed over and carry over into regular life and uh so that you know that makes it difficult but as far as being a police officer in wisconsin everybody you know, for the most part, people very still very much respect law enforcement, and 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 it's 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 a good it's a good vibe here. They're having a hard time now uh, hiring. That's been a big yeah. issue for them. Uh, sure. I can remember when I applied for my first part time job, there was 120 applicants for a part time that paid like 10 bucks an hour. There's guys at Walmart saying hello, making more than I was making. Uh, and now, uh, you know, we just had a hiring process. I'm on the city council in my hometown. And the police department's just on a hiring process, and they're having a hard time getting five applicants that are legitimate that they can even bring into interview. So it's getting different. Yeah, it definitely is. And I've heard that about the city of Chicago because that's where I'm from, and they're getting the applications are low, and then the quality of them are, are going. But as you said, a lot of respect to the police officers that are there and still um, striving to do it. Obviously, you had found a different path, which you know everybody has their own path. But I appreciate you doing the time that's there and obviously all the people that follow after you. My sense of humor didn't translate well into law enforcement either. People don't think out you're as funny when you put the cop stuff on. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, but, but the, the people you pull over, right. And they, they, they try to inject humor when you try to give a ticket that usually doesn't go over well either. So maybe you would have been the rarity that uh, if we drop the dad joke when, when you get pulled over. So everybody that's listening to this, Maybe. maybe drop a dad joke when you get pulled over. And maybe there's a guy like Justin, that was to say, you know what, that one's a good one. Yep. <laughs> Moving forward to the insurance agency, obviously, uh, you 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 had a stint with a captive franchise, so to speak. You know, um, outfit probably you know good tools to learn the trade. People need insurance, right? I've heard that story about coming out of that captive organization uh, from many people. They kind of just went to different pastures. Uh, it just wasn't a good fit for a lot of brokers, and who knows why. And it's a totally different topic, but. But what made you come back to the insurance world um, after doing the digital marketing stint with the restoration company? Uh, well, first, like, I don't have anything bad to say about farmers either. They did fine. Like it just it wasn't. Yeah. You know, the, the captive. They, they have their place. Corporate yeah. thing for me was not a fit. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so I when I left, I thought, OK, I did that for a while. Like, it's cool. I really learned it. I got it. Like, there's only been two careers so far in my life that like I really like soaked in all the information. And that was law enforcement and insurance. It just clicks. Um but I left, and and so when we were a restoration company, we're trying to you know talk to as many insurance agents as possible. So we would host CE classes, you know, every other month. And my job was to make sure everybody was entertained and taken care of, and sit in on all those all those classes so I could keep up. I worked out because I could keep up my my you know CE. But it was my favorite day every single month. It was my favorite day to go in there and sit and talk about insurance and listen to every all the other insurance professionals talking about all the stories and. Like I was engaged the entire time. It wasn't boring. I loved it. And I, you know, I just, I could just tell that I missed it. I I really missed it. 
So you move back into it. Obviously, there's a lot of people, not only you're just marketing and stuff like that, but there's a lot of people that still need help, right? They, they're Like you said, there's a lot of great outfits out there, but um, some people are looking for a good fit. Price is one piece of it, but relationships another, right? And that's where, where insurance agents really stand out, like in that local market or wherever uh, niche that, that business is in or that, that family lifestyle is. And so how has it been for the last eight months going back on your own? I mean, it's been I was I was scared. I was nervous mm-hmm. that it mm-hmm. wouldn't uh, take off. And and it, when I started scratch with uh, farmers, it was difficult. It was very hard to get going because nobody mm-hmm. knew who I was. Nobody had seen mm-hmm. me before. I was brand new. Uh, and the time I was there, I got involved in the networking and the chambers and the and the charity events and things of that nature. And I kept that going while I was at the restoration company as well. So I just kept showing up to stuff and being there. And I was very nervous about changing uh, going from insurance to restoration and coming back to insurance, that everybody's going to be like, well, he's just flipping around everywhere. And uh, it has been that amount of time that I put into the networking and the and the relationship building has 100% paid off. It's been a great first eight months. I couldn't ask for anything better. It's, it's, it's at the pace that I can keep up with at this point. Just I'm just barely at the pace where I can still keep up with it. Um, my wife works for, I don't know if you've heard of EAA. Yeah. That's an mm-hmm. air show every year. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm doing the Mr. Mom thing while running this agency during the summer. So I've got three kids here at home that, uh, you know, I'm just watching over them, making sure they don't yep. die. Yeah. And yeah that's then, right. uh, you know, running this, running this at the same time. So it's been, it's been a great pace. I've been busy every single day. Uh, I, yeah. I, it's, it's a really great market right now. Uh, yeah. In insurance. So with that in mind is like, what, what are you seeing in trends, right? So there's always trends going on, soft markets, hard markets, some of our audience doesn't understand those, but like, what are you seeing? Like with the, were you going back independent and owning your own shop? Uh, what have you been seeing for trends as far as even just weather related insurance company personalities? Uh, what are you seeing for trends that people should be listening to? Some of the biggest things I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of rate increases on the auto side. I think COVID, I, and I, I guess this is just my take on it, right? So I don't know exactly. The world of Justin. Numbers, yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but I'm thinking, you know, a lot of companies gave a lot of discounts and factored a lot of things in with COVID when people were driving a lot less, right? <laughs> and I don't know that they ca- that they caught up with all those changes before everybody got back out on the road and got going. Because it feels like there's a lot of companies that are taking big rate on the auto side right now mm-hmm. that it just, I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand why necessarily, but it's, you know, that that's one of them, I think. And maybe it's just in Wisconsin. Maybe we're just running into each other too much. And they do like beer here. So maybe that's an issue. I don't know. But, uh, but you guys spot a cow, really though. Seen. I don't. Oh, yeah. We do have spot a cow. I had a couple of yeah. those last night, actually. I've seen a lot on the homeowner side. So that's the very interesting thing that came out of COVID and all this inflation is that home insurance, uh, you know, just the, just the dwelling part of home insurance is vastly different now. Um, and a lot of people are seeing 20, 30 percent increases in their home insurance premium for good reason. All these companies are doing it to protect their people. But, you know, people see the price and that's what it is, you know. But mm-hmm. what happened is three or four years ago to build a 1500 square foot house, one hundred dollars a square foot, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You got to be covered for maybe some inflation guard and you're good to go. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, now it's two hundred between two hundred and three hundred dollars a square foot. So a mm-hmm. 1500 square foot house is now somewhere around the $300,000 range. Mm-hmm. So these people, most people, I would say 70% of the people that I see when I look at their policies, they're not, they're covered at that hundred to $150 a square foot r- rate. And so if, mm-hmm. if everything comes crumbling down to the ground, you're not, you don't have enough insurance. Like you don't have enough to rebuild. You can't rebuild in this market right now. So mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things I try to make sure I talk to people about and make sure that the, I tell them, well, hey, go look at your policy, see what mm-hmm. the number is, multiply your square footage by at least 250 and and see if those numbers match up. And if they don't, you need to call somebody and get that re-rated because you're not protected. Listen up. Butch wants to give you your own elite benefits playbook, and it's absolutely free from business strategy to benefit strategy. Every step from the start through implementation, account setup, and open enrollment. Working through service requests and the process of renewals. A valuable look at your company, your insurance options, and how to make the process easier on you. Go now to EliteBenefits.net slash playbook 
and get your free Elite Benefits Playbook. Or give Butch a call today, 708-535-3006. Years ago, another uh, insurance agent, um, you know, when he would meet with a client, and this just goes along with what you were saying, do you, do you want to have a policy just to meet the needs of having insurance? Or do you want to have a policy that, assuming you do have a catastrophic loss that you have everything taken care of and, and that'll have a deeper conversation or do we just get insurance? And, and he had found that the conversation was completely different. And even those who people were fast and saying, Hey, let's just get this done. I got to get, I got another appointment to go to. They actually slowed down a little bit and say, well, what do you mean exactly by that? Right? Because you bring up a good point where it's not about the value of the property, right? It's a, it's about what it's going to cost to go in there. There's labor intensive materials have gone up COVID. I mean, how much yep. is a two by four nowadays compared to even the what four or yeah. five years ago? Right. Right. And, and the labor costs are, are going up. And so obviously you're 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 having some success with the um the insurance agencies. Where do you see the agency going forward? Like what are you what what is Justin's big plans for um your insurance agency? Yeah, we're uh I'm bringing on a partner. Uh so I have a new uh new person starting um uh, probably in September. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Somebody that's coming out of a captive agency that was working for a, a captive that's going to come in and want, they, they wanted to do their own thing, but you know, they came and asked me questions about starting their own thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, through the conversation, I just said, Hey, wh why go through all those steps? Why go through all that work? I've already done it. I've already done this all. Why don't, and then you're working against me. Let's work together. Let's build this business and and do it that way so i've got a new partner coming in which i'm pretty excited about so moving forward i just see you know some good growth here in the next the next five years for sure now with with your insurance agency are you just staying with uh personal lines or are you diversifying over to commercial do you do commercial oh, yeah, now? i've got commercial i've got personal lines and commercial i've actually oh i've got more commercial uh policies now than i ever had with my previous book I, sure the new companies that i write for are very very good on the commercial side of things. So it's been it's been really great, especially being independent. I don't have you know I don't necessarily have a a, a no market. You know where you where you're with a mm -hmm. one captive. You know that it's okay. It's going to be you know office buildings and yep. dentist office and and a couple other things and everything else is a no. I don't have a no now. I can I have a yep. I'll figure it out. I'll find it. So that's oh, sure. Cool. It gives a, a flexibility. Obviously, there's a time and place for a captive. They have their share in the marketplace. They've been there for since the Absolutely. beginning of time. Yep. And then, yeah. but in the independent channel, um, what I've always liked with the people I rub elbows with, I, obviously, I'm an insurance agent too, but I don't do auto, home, and commercial. Uh, the, leave it up to guys like you um, that study it, read it, you know, get excited about it, show up in a room and get excited about teaching it. And so th those are the people that um, that you need to go to. And so with with that on the independent channel, I, I always call it personality matchmaking, right? So there's a certain risk under a certain terms or conditions, because maybe there was a previous fire, maybe there were some other things, especially with the commercial properties. Now, all of a sudden, certain underwriters don't want to do it. Or I've heard some crazy stories, and you could elaborate a little bit more, where where like maybe material of that old building was made in a certain way, certain insurance companies won't touch it. Yeah, no, we've had, we've had, I've had that in, the, in my previous insurance life, where it was, you know, there was a fire in 1842, you know, before they had electricity there and they weren't going to take it because there was this big fire. It's like, well, I mean, there's been advancements in technology since then. I think it's a little bit safer 100%. now. Yes. But that's a, you know, it is, it's, and it's not, you know, underwriters have a really tough job. They've got a really tough job and they give this book that they're supposed to learn from. And there's these checklists that come through that say, Hey, if this is happening or if this happened, we can't do it. And mm -hmm. it's not their fault. It's not their fault. You know, it's, it's the industry, you know, making sure that everybody's on their checks and balances. And at the end of the day, the insurance companies, you know, have to be profitable. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Right. So, yeah, it, it's that it's that you know, having that understanding with the underwriters too helps a whole lot. And to be able to uh -huh. explain, like, I know it's not you. I know I know that this is yep. what the book says you should be doing. Yep. But here, let's think outside the box here a little bit on this one particular. 
And and obviously that's a reason to go to a guy like Justin, right? To say, hey, I got the relationships, right? I could communicate with them. I know how they communicate. I know their appetite, right? I know their appetite. I know some edges that we could push to if we needed to. But it's really the help benefit. It's a customer service thing, how you could benefit that client, not necessarily for insurance situations that shouldn't be there, but more so so like, hey, like you said, so what there was a fire uh you know 200 years ago like like what 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 can we do now there's so much more that's right. been there and I'm sure a whole bunch of stuff has been replaced in that building and so how is the um videos that you create these dad jokes have impacted the insurance agency in the last 8 months yeah i mean it's a it's a tough it's a it's a tough it's tough to translate that over right cuz the people number 1 it's global the 130,000 yeah. there's people in Australia yeah. and you know Africa and all kinds of stuff that yeah. reach out and say you know hey I love these jokes or whatever so I mean and I can only write in Wisconsin so that right. doesn't really you know do much good there but I think on the on the local side uh it's been good for recognition it's it's pretty much just I mean my brand's always in the yeah. videos I make sure it's there um and they know who I am uh so I, that, that way it's it's been a great it's way less expensive expensive than paying for a billboard on the highway. Uh, but it's pretty much been just the digital billboard uh, for mm-hmm. me. No, and you make a good point, right? It's about the credibility, who you are. People do business who uh, they know, like, and trust. And obviously, uh, even some of the other videos that I, I briefly saw before our interview today, um, that you know, the, it, you show a lot of credibility when you talk about serious topics too. So, like, there's there's a lot yeah. there from Justin that that comes to the table, and I and I think that's fantastic. And you always need something in the in the forefront to give you that credibility. And even though they're dad jokes, right? They know who you are. They they obviously you're working with Steph, right? And Steph wouldn't be there if you were. A bad guy, essentially, and so right. you're good people. You're 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 bringing humor, which is what everybody loves. They always like to laugh and and whatnot. And so, um, and then you're doing a little twist with the digital agency, like you're inviting some other local businesses or just businesses in general to be part of it. Is that right? Like an advertising thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if anybody can. I'm happy to advertise for anyone. But yeah, with, the recent thing we're doing is with a a fitness company. The Steph and I were both talking about wanting to get in good shape, and we've got a local. Uh, a couple of local trainers that are doing a really, they do a really great job. And uh, we, we talked to them and said, Hey, let's, let's collaborate. Let's see if we can do something together. We want, I need that credit. I need that accountability. So let's, let's do it. And let's be, let's be raw about it and keep it out there and make it so everybody can see all of it and see the process. Hey, sometimes it just starts with uh, low uh, connections, right? And that's how I reached out to you saying, hey, you're doing a great thing. I know you started this agency. Maybe you could use my platform to help promote it a little bit, but I love the videos and I'm sure everybody else does. And so I definitely appreciate the time. Justin, we'll, maybe we'll in six months or a year, we'll have you back on the podcast. Give us some updates, what's going on. Maybe this new partnership yeah. will breed other things and maybe you'll be outside of Wisconsin too. Um, that or I'm just going to go to your house and pick up a spot of cow. Um, because you can't get in <laughs> Chicago. Enough. I have uh, some in the fridge. Yep. Yeah, there there we go. So, <laughs> hey, Justin, if somebody wanted to reach out to you for, let's say, insurance needs or even the uh, the TikTok videos, how do they reach out to you? Yeah, they can call me. Uh, it's uh, 920-718-0163. That's the office phone. It's a cell phone. I don't have a, a landline for my office. So you can call and text that number anytime and I can answer questions. Uh, you can go to uh, schmickagency.com. You can fill out a quote request form that goes right to my email. Doesn't get sold to anybody else. You're not going to get a hundred calls from a bunch of different people trying to sell you insurance. It'll just go right to me. Otherwise they can uh, email me at justin at schmickagency.com. Yeah, we'll leave some of that stuff information inside the show notes so people can reach out directly and obviously look up Justin for his uh, daily TikTok videos. Um, they're all over the place. They're, you can put them on LinkedIn, even though it's a professional site. People still need a little yep. laugh for the day. Hey, we'll have you back sometime. Um, thanks for coming. Great. Thank you so much for having me. This is it's great. I love talking about insurance. So yeah, anytime. Absolutely.